What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, we're going to answer the following question. Are software engineers overpaid? Let's dive in. Can you think of any industry other than software engineering where a 20-something year old with no advanced degree, sometimes no college degree even, can unironically say, and oftentimes rightfully so, I'm underpaid while making north of $200,000 a year in the US, or at the very least over $100,000 a year, and all the while only working 40-hour work weeks, sometimes even less, like 30-hour work weeks, sometimes a little bit more, 45-hour work weeks, from home, sitting at a desk all day. I can't think of any. Maybe the OnlyFans industry, but that doesn't really count. I mean, don't the top OnlyFans creators make like a million dollars or more per month? But again, that doesn't count. Let's look at other like typical, you know, high paying professions. Doctors. Doctors usually don't start their careers until their 30s. They have to go through all of medical school. They have a pile of debt when they get out of medical school. They have to go through residency. That's not to bash on doctors. That's just like a fact. Then lawyers. Lawyers usually work like 80 hour work weeks, especially at the beginning of their careers. They have to go through law school. I had a friend who went from being a lawyer to a software engineer because he had gone to Stanford Law, so one of the best law schools in the US. He worked at one of the best law firms in New York City, and yet he was working 80 hour work weeks, so it was brutal. He was making like only 140,000 or 150,000 a year, which was like considerably less than an entry level software engineer in New York City at Google, for example. So you get the idea. And then we can look at some, you know, trade professions that are known to sometimes make like a lot of money. For example, I know that if you are a plumber in the US and you have like a good network and all that, you can go up to like six figures or more. But first of all, it's probably not typical. Like it's probably on the higher range from what I've seen online. And also being a plumber is a pretty physically demanding job, right? It's a physical job. Sometimes you have to work with you know, literal shit. Whereas as a software engineer, you usually don't have to work with literal shit, except if you're working in a legacy PHP code base, but most of us don't do that. So the point is that as a software engineer, you clearly have it much easier. And I think one thing that's really important to highlight is the barrier to entry or rather lack thereof to get into software engineering. Again, you don't have to go through medical school. You don't have to go through law school. To get some of these super high paying software engineering jobs, all that you need is to learn how to code, which you can do these days even just at a coding boot camp or just self-taught online. And then you have to go through the technical interviews. And by the way, if you're preparing for your own technical interviews, then do check out my company, AlgoExpert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. But the point is, clearly, software engineering is this notable exception to the rule as far as high paying jobs with like roses around it. And so it begs the question of the hour, are software engineers overpaid? Is the compensation of software engineers these days unfair? And my answer is no, they're not overpaid. And no, it's not unfair because ultimately the market is what dictates what is fair and what is not fair, who is overpaid and who is underpaid. Now, we could get into a whole debate about like capitalism and all that in the comments. Let's maybe not do that. The point is, the market is what dictates this. And just as the market has determined that someone like, I don't know, Kim Kardashian can command millions upon millions of dollars for a single Instagram post promoting some product, which she totally deserves because she has the fame, the notoriety, the reach, the influence to be able to command such amounts of money. Well, just as the market has determined that, the market has determined that software engineers can command these super high compensation packages. Believe me, if Facebook or Amazon, Tesla, whatever big company or startup didn't have to pay software engineers so much, they would not. But the truth is, they do. And so my answer to this question is, like I just said before, no, it is not unfair. And no, software engineers are not overpaid, even though it might very much feel like it at times, both as an onlooker, although most people who are not in the field don't even realize that software engineers can be paid this much, but also as a software engineer. Sometimes you can be like, 
why am I making this much money when like I had it so much easier than a lot of other people? Like let's say teachers or nurses, right? There's so many other professions where you're like, why aren't they making as much as, as I am? But anyway, what are the takeaways that I want to leave you with? Because, you know, we answered the question, but let's see if we can learn some lessons from it. Well, I think there are four takeaways. The first one is if you are someone who is considering transitioning to a software engineering career, or maybe you're in college or high school and you're not sure what you want to do with your life and you need that extra push, well, then maybe this video could serve as that extra push. I'm not saying that money is everything, but it certainly isn't. But at the very least, from a money point of view, financially speaking, software engineering is well worth it. So I'd highly recommend you pursue it as a career. The second takeaway is if you are already a software engineer in the field, you should, first of all, be very aware of your market value and how high your market value might be. It's very possible that you are happy in your job and what you're making, but you could actually be making more. And again, I'm not saying that money is everything. Like, perhaps your job, if you are making not as much as you could be, is still like great, and so you're, you're really happy where you're working. But perhaps you could be making more, and you should not feel guilty to want to make more so long as the market says that it is acceptable. Basically, like, don't feel guilty to pursue a different job that pays more, right? Now, the third takeaway, which is kind of like a counter to the previous one, is just that if you are a software engineer, I would encourage you to try to be grateful. Like, ultimately, we do have it really nice as software engineers, and I think we're all, if we are software engineers, we're all very lucky to live in this era where we have it so nice as software engineers, because I think it's very possible that in the future it won't be as nice. And this brings me to the fourth and final takeaway, which is that I was recently speaking with the CEO of a big coding boot camp, one of the best coding boot camps out there, and he told me something interesting. He said that his vision, uh, or rather his mission for his coding boot camp would not be complete until the day where software engineering salaries are considerably lowered. And what he meant by that was that ultimately the reason software engineers are paid so much is because presumably there is excess demand for software engineers and there is a shortage of supply for software engineers. It might not feel like it when you're like a software engineer trying to crack into the industry, but that's the truth. And so obviously by teaching more and more people with this coding bootcamp or with other things, you know, to code and to become software engineers, eventually you will no longer have a shortage of supply and software engineering compensation packages will start to go down. Now, I'm not trying to alarm you. I don't think this is going to happen like tomorrow, next year, two years. Probably this is going to happen in like the next decade or two decades, but it probably will happen. And that's just something to keep in mind, like again, to be grateful for the current moment and to also just remind yourself to, you know, stay up to date with new technologies, stay, you know, sharp, uh, keep polishing your skills. Don't become a washed up developer like I am right now. I'm probably not hireable as a dev right now. Um, maybe I am. Hopefully I am. But uh, just, you know, keep up to date because we, we don't know what the, what the future holds for software engineers as more and more people learn to code. Anyway, that's all I've got for you in this video. I hope that you found it entertaining or informative or both. If you did, don't forget to smash the like button. It really helps me out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you enjoy short form written content, follow me on Instagram, or sorry, follow me on, I messed that one up. If you enjoy short form written content, follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter. If you enjoy pictures, follow me on Instagram. And otherwise, I will see you in the next video.